listens to Slayer, and I listen to Slayer. I am God, and Slayer is also God. Um, Are you, would that make you a God Slayer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That was beautiful, Shiver. That was beautiful. Oh, man. Um, 
we were just talking. I've genuinely been listening to Slayer lately. I love them. We were talking right before this, and um, I've bought a new house, and I'm moving from this house to a new house, and that's going to be fun. And Shiver was like, you're not allowed, or Eric was like, you're not allowed near sledgehammers anymore. Um, and I'm not. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, um, what, what, two years ago? Three years ago? Yeah, it was like, yeah, that's that's about right. It was about. I think it, was it might the have been more close to like three years. Yeah, it was like three years ago. Right at the beginning of the pandemic, I was building a new deck outside because right at the beginning of the pandemic, everyone went out and did found a new hobby, right? Some people baked bread, some people. David increased the value of his property um, by 100 grand. Yeah, I, I built a deck. <laughs> Anyway, I've been so it was for quarantine all my fucking life up to that point. <laughs> I was good. Anyway, I was like, I that's was... right, fuckers. Now you all know what my life is like. You it was all great. went nuts. I loved I it. Like it was for 40 years. Nuts. That's that's right. Um I was sitting there, you know, with a sledgehammer, hitting my stair stair concrete stairs with a sledgehammer to get rid of them. And in mid-swing, the head of the sledgehammer popped off, nailed me in the back of the head, um, blood everywhere. I sat there and I was like, like my yeah, daughter was... We get this was... cryptic message from David <laughs> saying I got hit in the head with a sledgehammer. <laughs> um, and Fuck. I was like, I had to, I was holding my head while my wife called people to come watch our son, because he was asleep upstairs, so that she could take me to the hospital. She was calling people to come watch you die. <laughs> well, but I was, I was holding, like, trying to stop the blood, and Mac is sitting there, like, crying, and I'm like, "Don't worry, Mac. It's okay. It's just a sledgehammer to the head. I'm fine." <laughs> anyway, would you like to see a bit of human brain? <laughs> so my reasoning center. So. I was going to tell a story because I'm not allowed around um, large tools anymore, like like axes and sledgehammers and things. Um, so I went over to my mom's place last week, and um, my my stepdad was there with a pickaxe, trying to take out. Uh, they had a, a cedar tree that was dead, and they were he was taking the cedar tree out with a pickaxe, and I was he was getting nowhere so i went over to you know help um but i wasn't allowed to touch the pickaxe so i had to like i i basically ripped the cedar tree out of the ground with my hands because i wasn't allowed to use the the tool to pull it out because i hurt myself with big tools um and the yeah. pickaxe won't a pickaxe won't do the same thing as a as a sledgehammer no if you get hit in the head with a pickaxe that's game over time man yeah <laughs> Yeah, so, so that's, I didn't, that's player one has left the game. You know? Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't go use the pickaxe. Just I love you. You're welcome. I didn't. You, you looked at it and you were like, "Oh, I am. I will so tempted. Stop calling to me." I really like, like I used to love chopping wood. Like, it's, it's just, you get in the rhythm, and it's really nice. Yeah. And then you terrify your wife and your yeah. child. <laughs> hey, Tip. Hey, Pixie. Hey, Mazer. Hey, everyone. I'm um, I'm astonished you didn't fracture your skull when you hit yourself in the head. I've got a hard head. Apparently. It's very good. Very glad you do, my friend. I mean, I, I didn't have a concussion. I just had, like, there was a little, like almost like a v-shaped so cut and which is still like i've i know where the scar is yeah. but uh it's actually really annoying because like every once in a while they're like i i get like an ingrown hair under the scar that i have to like yeah it's fun um yes pixie checking the integrity of the true. tools is important i i mean the problem is really fixable i just needed to not have a 50 year old sledgehammer uh that the helps. the handle was all but dried out I, I would imagine you know however many years of your life you've been on this planet probably the biggest tool you've ever had in both your hands at the same time 
it's mm. you know you got to get used to that weight know how to swing it around and not just fumble with it you know yeah it's true it's true yeah um i like that right. picture he would what not be baited <laughs> he's a concussed oh all right <laughs> should we uh, move on to um what uh, is it that uh, we do no idea. No bloody um, clue. <laughs> this I want is, to. I right, want to point this out. This is our citizen show. I think. Here's uh, here's my beer this week. Oh shit! We got to contact Zane and see. Yeah, he uh, lost. Where lost his, his avocado bag, bag went. It's it's yeah. a Star Citizen themed drink. It is totally avocados. Is the end, man. Yeah, Zane and avocados. The famed um, avocados. I didn't know he kept them in a bag, though. That's kind of rough. Do you, yeah, but where else do you keep your avocados? Well, hopefully in their houses. But You know, only in the last month have I... In the last month, I tried guacamole for the first time in my life. Yeah. It's That's amazing. Horrible, it? oh, it's, it's really amazing. good. It's amazing. Really good. It's so good. I'm not. I'm because I'm on the borderline of Gen X and Millennial. I'm not Millennial enough to enjoy avocados. Why not? But I'm it Gen X enough good. to be completely ignored and forgotten about with my opinions of avocados. So it works <laughs> out. Um, I really, I don't consider myself like hip or anything. In fact, I might be the least cool person there is. But um. They're, uh, but I, I love avocados. They're amazing. Have you met me? And more importantly, have you ever heard me try to tell a joke? David? No. Exactly. David, you have, you have, well, for the moment, two houses and a wife and two kids. I think you're all right. That doesn't mean I'm <laughs> really because you describe. That means, two houses, that means a I wife fucked up. And two kids, and I'm like, that is not okay. That means that I fucked up somewhere. Okay. <laughs> two houses? Fuck <Fuckling> that. <laughs> two oh, kids? Man. Oh, I don't sleep enough as it is, but you know. Yeah, you just want to nail in that never sleeping again aspect, yeah. Thanks, kid. <sighs> If All right. bonding over our hatred of avocados. That's okay. I mean, everyone has to hate something, right? I, and people are constantly trying to put uh, parsley and cilantro and things I eat, and I hate both of them. So, how can you hate I parsley? Can eat, I, it has no flavor. I eat parsley. Okay, well, it has a flavor to me, and I don't like it. And and okay. uh, I know a lot of people who put it in every fucking thing. So, <laughs> I like parsley. I think I don't I, like cabbage. I think parsley, it must be one of those, like, like cilantro, like one of those things where some people, it just tastes bad. I I don't know, maybe, but I don't know, for I, me, I hate it. For me, it's mushrooms. Yeah, I'm not a mushroom person either. I've been trying to, I'm really... trying, I've been trying to get better about mushrooms, but I'm not a mushroom person. I didn't like mushrooms. Then I came here and had Oh god, shiitake, king oysters, all sorts of other mushrooms. And I'm like, I think the Japanese can make mushrooms. These good. are fucking amazing. Japanese food. It's is it's like incredible. tomatoes. I won't eat like a a store bought tomato here, but man, go to Italy and get like a right friggin' a tomato. tomato. Oh, I will just eat that shit raw. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that's. There's flavor in that food that doesn't exist in Canada. It does not exist. Yep. Seriously. Hey, oh, uh, Canada. I, Canada's I'm with, I'm with, I don't like tomatoes, but the moment you said Italy, it's like, yeah, that that would make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. What's up? What's up, Eric? We're 17 minutes in. What do you yeah. think? I think it's time. Okay. So I want. Well, I like everyone... Vegemite. More than Marmite, but I'll eat Marmite. But 
Vegemite is the superior food. The problem is, for me, to get it here, it costs over a thousand yen for a little jar. A thousand yen! It only comes from fucking for you, Australia. I need you to remind me, what is a yen? It is the currency It's in Japanese Japan. currency, I know that I mean, one. I mean, in relationship to, like, a US <laughs> A dollar. Uh, is 10,000 uh, like $10? Ten. Or yeah, is 1,000 like $10? Let's find out. No, Google. Check. I like, Google I really like me. Ovaltine. Just to, to get really okay. weird and old. Ovaltine is delicious. Um, okay, Star um, Citizen. For those who are wondering, uh, 1,000 Japanese yen is like just under 10 Canadian dollars. So it's like seven seven fifty US. Cents. £5.82 for a jar of Vegemite. It's like two so, three quid in the UK. Uh, so Star Citizen. I want to start off with the name of the show this week, because I'm really proud of it, and also ask um, Eric. <laughs> That's an amazing title. Come on, give me that one. I That was an amazing title. It's the best title you've had in years probably like it's so good yes um uh david had me check the crowdfunding uh star citizens made three million dollars in the last like 36 hours the f the fury is a really nice little ship yep it is also a ship um, people have been asking for for a long time yeah uh, okay, we should talk about the Fury after because we didn't do a show last week, so we're going to quickly run through the we're stuff from jump the show. Back in time, everybody in pretend time. that it is May thirteenth. Uh, Put your hands on your hips. Now bring your knees in time, and now do it's the, the pelvic, pelvic thrust. thrust that really drives you in say a a a a. a, a. a. Fuck, now I'm going to have to watch that fucking movie. Oh, what a movie. One of three musicals in my life I like. It's just a jump to the left. What, oh, oh. Such a good episode. Mm, but what are Rocky the others? Picture Show. Yeah. South Park movie. Okay. Oh, fuck. What was the third one? My brain's not working. I'm, I've not been sleeping well at all lately. It'll come back to me, and I'll just randomly say it, and you'll be like, uh... Okay, so someone tell me what these... I don't actually... Is Moonwalker! Okay. All right. Um, what's with... What are we looking at here? We're looking at settlements. They have really added crazy. a whole bunch of new derelict settlements to Stanton. The upshot of this was that because of previous work that they had done... They were able to make, I think it was like 15 new derelict settlements in about two weeks. Um, Excellent. And uh, and they all have different you know placements and themes and stories about them and missions associated with them and so on and so forth. Wow. Red Dead Redemption 3 looks great. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I Let's mean... See a single horse. <laughs> when are we going to get horses? I mean, these these look fantastic. Like horses? I want cybernetic horses. Okay, when are we going to get... Isn't that just a ship? <laughs> well, technically it's not a car, because it doesn't vehicle? have wheels. It's a ground... Is it a vehicle, though? What's the definition a of a vehicle? Like, a horse isn't a vehicle. A carriage would be a vehicle it, it, drawn it? by a horse. The horse is, isn't it? it? Actually, a horse is a vehicle. Really? Yeah. A thing used well, I guess for it's a vehicle for transportation. Or... Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's very the 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 definition is very broad. This is really neat seeing all the different like the pieces, all the different pieces they've built. It's 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 super fancy fucking Lego. Yeah, you yeah. Know, once they've got these sort of pieces like that, it obviously they've got to work on big bulky pieces exactly like they're doing now. To like the derelict ships. That they can... 
do quicker, faster, get it out there and be like, ta-da. But as time progresses and, you know, these are settled in and these are becoming more common, they can start looking at individual components, really customize them and make completely unique structures. And eventually, I'm sorry, I'll get fast. They can have it done in such a way that they're familiar with it. They just make a fucking procedural tool for it. Yep. Sir, sir, I have a question, sir. What is your question, sir? Do you think... Okay, so they are making derelicts out of, eventually, basically every single ship. They're going to have little tiny... They're going to have derelict settlements built out of many of the ships. What yep. do you think is the chance that when they start implementing survival elements of the gameplay, you can crash your ship and then you can build essentially one of these settlements out of your ship? Sure, I think that's extremely plan, isn't it? I think extremely high because that'll just tie into the salvage mechanic and you'll be able to salvage pieces of your ship and, and construct a thing. Um, I don't know how um, intricate we'll get. But uh, but I think There's... that's definitely the direction they're going. I cannot. This is this looks so cool. The little hyper hydroponics labs and ah. Oh. There are some I, of these that are really cool that are like built out of the skeleton of an old of a of an old rusted out ship. It's really neat. Sorry, Shiver. Go ahead. I, I I'm. I, th th I'm sorry, my mind is just flooding now with all these possibilities since Eris has said that, and it's... I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, don't be. Like, you crashed um, Endeavor farming pod. Brilliant start, start. But I'm just wondering whether or not the way that they're constructing the game of um, like the tier 1, tier 0 stuff first mechanic-wise, like salvaging and all that sort of thing. All of that. And then getting to these points where something like being stranded on a planet, when they're at that stage of looking at that mechanics-wise, gameplay-wise, they've already had probably several decades by then, <laughs> looking at the mechanics of uh, starvation, hydration, all, all that yep. sort of crap that will be just part of a survival game. And it, it's it's just there. So all they need to do is just test it as is and then say, okay, okay, we can improve here by doing this. We can put in this here and then just look at it as almost, um, I don't want to describe it as an end game content because it's kind of more on the development side end game in a sense. It, it's, they've done all this tech to get to this point where they can just look at this as a concept and say, shit, all, all this shit is in place. So it, it, it's pretty fucking sweet as it is. Let's test it out and see how we can improve this as the endpoint culmination of all these different mechanics. And then it can, you know, same for salvage, the endpoint salvage, um, yep. recycling everything, creating something new, going into a different chain. We've talked about this in years prior of how Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is just a phenomenal game and a really good honestly a really good um analogy to star citizen in that they built systems yeah. and it's tears a, it's of the kingdom one of the best systems based games well tears of the kingdom which just came out took that system based gameplay and just injected it with so much caffeine yeah i've seen some Tears, of the it, creations it is just systems and let people go. They built a system for people to build mechs or cars or how, literally whatever you want and then they just said go because you've got the system. Do what you want. And I that is how CIG have been taking the little tiny individual disparate systems, right? They've got mining, which is its own system. You can do all of your own stuff, but What's going to be really interesting, Shiver, and you were sort of alluding to this, is when they have them all done to the point that they can bring all of these disparate systems together and really connect everything. And then, yep, yeah. I, I, I think the fascinating thing about this, and this is really what makes Star Citizen special and what, what it takes a while in the Star Citizen 
community to sort of get your head around is like if you project this forward to where they're probably going with all of this you will end up with people who have I mean, it already happens at games, but but especially in this game, you will have players who will meet each other at conventions and talk about what they're doing in the game, and it will bear no resemblance to each other. Yeah. They will have nothing in relate. Like they will have done completely different things, and both had great times doing things that are not similar at all. <laughs> you know, in the in the world. <laughs> One person is like, ah, I crashed my ship. I didn't. I decided I didn't want to just suicide or something, so I made this base. And then the base turned into, it got bigger. Then another ship crashed. I invited them to join me, and we built the base bigger. And now we're mining. And so we turned it into, like, a resource station where people can land, and they can get all, all of this, the, this stuff that we mined. And then we got other stuff because people are coming and buying things. And, you know, <laughs> you know like, and on and on and on and on. Well, it's, it's, um, it's the at this point in time, what they're looking at doing is the best that we can for a complete sandbox as technologically possible. Yeah. At the yeah. moment. I mean, I, we, there are exceptions, such as Second Life, but that's, that, that's comparing an orange to an apple, you know? So I think we're going to get to a point in Star Citizen, and I think it's going to be really interesting. But I heard... Um... Some people were doing this in World of Warcraft, in I think the like World of Warcraft Classic, where, uh -huh. where people were implementing their own hardcore mode. Because World of Warcraft does not support hardcore mode, but people were like, as at like streamers and people are implementing their own hardcore mode where if they die, they delete they their delete character. It. And I think that would actually be really interesting for Star Citizen to do is to have hardcore servers or to have people on their own. Do... That, that's the normal service. Well, no, because you'll be able, like, there's the cloning, right? You'll be able to, as in, like, no, when you die, you're dead. I, I still don't think that they're actually going to do that necessary i don't think it's going to be like if i get blown up with a fucking rocket launcher and there is no piece of me bigger than an atom you're gonna tell me they're gonna yes. cybernetically clone that and it's gonna yes. be like uh, yeah i don't well, know it's just gonna be isn't, 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 be isn't the, isn't the whole thing sleeps. now like the whole thing now is that they they take like a a, a save of your your yeah. dna or whatever when you're in the hospital yeah. and then they rebuild you from the ground up it's not like they have to go get a piece of you yeah um they basically it's, are cloning you it's it's sleeves from altered carbon like you die but you've got another it's, sleeve it's to hop me. into yeah but I think it would be really interesting for people to implement their own hardcore mode and, like, it would make you want to survive on a planet more. Like, you crash, no, I'm I'm going to get off this myself. I'm going to survive myself. I don't know. That's a, Yeah, exactly. No, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. It is kind of soft in there. Kind, it is kind of soft. Because if, if, if you're on this deserted planet, stranded, and you die, you get cloned and you wake up somewhere else. So in essence, you kind of made a new character like that because you're no longer there. Yeah, I think um, I think we're gonna have people that will like delete their like. I mean, uh, yeah, 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 probably. Delete and start a new character. Like, I'm pretty sure you're not going to have to have the like cloning insurance or whatever. Yeah, you can probably um, say no. I think you, I think you pay for it. So. Yeah. I think there will be a way to just be like, no, if I die, um, I come back as my next of kin, which is the other part of Death of the Space yeah. Man, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so it's Invictus Week this week. It is Invictus Week this week, although that is not the... Uh, is that the topic of this? Uh, this is The topic of this is um, Misk. Mm, the future of Misk. The future. Or did you of just Misk. want to talk? Did you just want to talk about Invictus right now? I was just going to talk about Invictus because it's Invictus this it. week, and this was like a hey, it's Invictus. Um, I don't know. Invictus is. 
<laughs> we stopped saying Invictus. It's lost its meaning now. Invictus. Invictus. This is okay. So they're they're showing off Mirai, um, which uh... is. <laughs> oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. You're welcome, Shiver. Um... Mary, who the fuck's Mary? It's not Myra. that hard. Who? What? It's not a fucking eel. <laughs> Me there. Future. That simple. Um. So. Oh, I've got so many things I want to say about Mirai and Misk and <sighs> one. I really like that. What is what's that damn ship they're showing called? The Racer. The Razor. The Razor. The razor. razor. razor yeah. Um, I'm really glad that the Razor is no longer in the Misk brand line because it it's not also, a Misk ship. I'm gonna give you credit because you you called that out like a couple of weeks before they announced the the Mirai thing. Um, you're like uh, the Razor <laughs> isn't a Misk ship. It's not a misc ship. I'm sorry. It doesn't really look like the other one. It's a lovely ship, but it is not misc. I love that it's it's on its own brand now. That's honestly perfect. Yep. And this, I wonder if this is going to extend to other things because it was always um, shit. What's that really fucking weird ship randomly with the random? Is it the Carrick? The Carrick. The Carrick. Thinking of it's the Carrick as an anvil an ship, which is ship. yeah, yeah. A yes. military brand. And it's like, yeah, it's a bit like that's kind of makes sense, but okay. It would be cool, actually, if they just created a civilian branch of Anvil but that was headed by the Carrick and they yeah. made some other civilian ships. But they could do that with almost every manufacturer. Like the, uh, the Drake Vulture mm. was shown there, and the Drake Vulture does not fit any of the other Drake ships. It does. It's Drakeish in it's Drakeish in yeah. some ways, but in terms of its actual like appearance, it doesn't look super Drake. Um, but the way it's made does. Um, the way it's so made it's does. A, it's sort of a borderline. It's one. No tip, thanks. Right, but it, it feels like it should be like an Drake's. Argo well, not not Argo, well, but well, it should be an Argo ship, but like Drake's um utility line, right? Right, like so Drake have their... their... Sense. Yeah. It makes sense in the Star Citizen universe that still has capitalism for companies to have subdivisions that are branching yeah. out to other totally. markets because otherwise, you know, you want a mining ship. Well, your choice is misc, 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 or misc. Yep. Yep. Um, oh. Honda's a really good example. They have very thriving divisions in, like, um, uh, power sports and... and yep. uh, that are lawnmowers. Outside, yeah, yeah, that whole section of small engines that are outside of the realm of their normal vehicles. Yeah. CH, pro CH products usually make uh, control equipment for industrial manufacturer yep. tractors and PC. Yep. And also joysticks for PCs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, where, where am I? Oh, here. So yeah, I'm I'm really Unless glad they they're doing Mirai sell products and not just hurt people in Africa. Because <laughs> fuck Nestle, uh, seriously, yes. fuck Nestle, fuck Nestle, they're evil, yeah, yeah, evil fucking bastards, just fucking just pure unadulterated evil. Yep. Um, speaking of That's evil, company companies get too big, they lose their. Uh... Yep. their conscience speaking of evil um we're mm. not going to do this this week because we're not going to have time because we still have an entire other week to talk about um but there is a new tutorial in star citizen which is something that i have been asking cig to put in for six years to put basically back since, in uh, basically for, like, since the last the last tutorial stopped working properly. Yeah. For a long time. And there is now a new tutorial. Um, I gotta give them credit, though. The original tutorial they did was amazing. I should give it some first really good in insight into how well they could make an experience. 
Um, because it was the first like complete contained experience they had made, and it was really cool. And then they were like, "Yeah, we're not going to keep it up." (laughs) Yeah, which is really really disappointing. That said, there will I'm sure there will be a similar tutorial in Squadron Forty Two that runs you through all of the ropes, which is going to be great. Um, but they definitely needed something in Star Citizen. It is genuinely like take off your blinders for a second. Star Citizen is confusing as fuck. Yeah, it totally is. Well, even look when me and you um like really got back into trying to play the game again, we you know, and we played a ton, but those first couple of weeks we were like, How do we do things? It's <laughs> so massive and so confusing and so unlike almost any other video game that it really does need an tutorial. So um I'm going to try out the tutorial probably next week, and uh Shiver and Eric are going to watch and castigate me for it and uh and heckle you, yeah. And heckle me while I run through the tutorial and uh see how it how it um how it shapes up for someone that doesn't really know how to play the game. Which is me. Hi. It's going to be um, perfect. <laughs> and, I don't think you, and, I, and I don't think either of us have spent a whole lot of time in Area 18 lately. And that's where it is. No. Uh, that is where it's based. So that'll be good. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean, full credit to CIG. They're getting better. They're adding, like hints and easier bindings and things like they're getting better um oh their reason and their and their reason for not having a tutorial for a long time was totally legitimate it just it it gets rough when you have as many players as they do (laughs) and as many new people as are coming in and you don't have a good way to show them how to play so i've got two complaints or well, I had two complaints, and now I've got one complaint. Um, okay. There's a free so fly right now. Freelancer. There's a free fly right now. Yes, there is. Why? Are you I. Well, I'm complaining because I really think CIG need to stop doing free flies like the week that a new patch launches, because they're having server problems again, from what I've heard. Which, guess what? That always happens when they launch a new numbered patch. Yep. You shouldn't be using the launch of a new numbered patch to get new people into the game, because they're going to have a shit time. Yep. Stop doing that. You've got a new tutorial? Fantastic. That's been something that, that to me, has kept people away from star citizen for a shitload of time because yep lots of people just don't have the time to learn how to play it it also it also gives another reason to for existing players to recommend the game because for a long time it was like someone would ask you like should i play this game and you'd think about how hard it is to actually get into it and you're like not right now No. And you'd be like, do I have the... Oh, hey, Kemi! Hey, Kemi! Thank you so much! Thank you! Um, I... Yeah. Thank you, Kemi! Thank you, Kemi! How's it going? Raid! I like raids. Raids are good. Um, So, Guns and Glue, I understand that they need the stress testing data, but I think they can get the stress testing data. I don't think that's data necessarily without... what Guns and Glue is saying. That's what he's saying. CIG's response. To yes, I. Would yeah, be, you're right. Has been. I know that that's probably CIG's response. My my response to that is how much? How many people do they lose who walk in and try and and play and try the free fly and can't log in well, and it's buggy and true. like <sighs> but we're not the ones sat here with active server count numbers it's true, we're not and um, they keep 
doing this and they're not stupid maybe right? they need it maybe they have to have, have have to have this kind of crazy overload to see if they can fix it i mean it, it's almost like people who are buying into the game at this point testing it but there'd be a warning or something, right? Right there, quite obviously there on the screen. Warnings. When you purchase something that says, this is not a finalized product, you are buying into the alpha testing phase. So obviously, you know. Anyway, I... I think, I think, I think all, all of these yeah. points are valid. Also, yeah. even... Uh, yeah, just a quick look there. They have like... Uh, about sixteen thousand new people. Um, uh, over the last two, actually, it's probably even more than that because I don't think it's accounting for a couple other things. So yeah, I think the so normally over two days they would see about an extra two thousand people come in or twenty five hundred. Um, it was more like sixteen thousand. How many of them buy? Um, we don't know yet, really, do we? It's v almost impossible to tell when less your CIG because there's also the like normally I could tell because of a funding increase occurring at the same time but, when I yeah. look at the data, but the problem is the Mirai is also happening right now and it um well let's just say people like the ship <laughs> people do that's the easiest way to put it. Um, speaking of, should we uh? Should we go and talk about the the Mirai Fury? Well, do we have more videos from last week? No, no, we don't. That's, All right, that's then. last week. Vegemite. Let's, Vegemite. Uh, let's. We already talked about Vegemite and how expensive it is in Japan, and how we need to send we, we, uh, we, we, shiver we... shiver a case of it. I was um, talking with um JJ, great guy by the way, very big SC fan, knows his stuff. Um, who lives in Australia, and he was showing me all the different Vegemites you can get. And they, like, like buckets of Vegemite for mm -hmm. 20 cents, you know? And I'm like, oh my god. Uh, so you, You're constantly in fear of your life and death at any <laughs> point, but at least you can get a bucket of Vegemite. Um, okay, Kenny? <laughs> Pocket carrier is the word of the day, yes. And I want to have, before we really get into the fury, because this is going to be, there's two separate conversations here. One is about the Fury. I want to have a conversation about pocket carriers. Because, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but we've been we've been watching this this project for a little bit, and I have distinct memories of, and I think it was actually like Chris showing up on Reverse the Verse back in the day, back when that would happen once in a while. And talking about like how they didn't want to have pocket carriers in the game. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like Chris was vehemently anti pocket carrier. Yep. No, he he didn't want them. Um, I suspect they have just changed their mind over the years. They've the, changed the their thing, mind on other things too. They have. The thing that that really gets me is we went from there will be no pocket carriers to. With the Fury, every single ship is a pocket carrier. Like every every ship with a with a even slightly big big enough uh, cargo bay. Oh, um, the the I, it'll um... be so cool. Can you imagine though, you're flying around in a freaking freelancer, and you're like, "Hey, buddy, screw the turret, just jump in the Fury." <laughs> well, I I, I think Tipitari has t tested it out for me, but. The Fury MX in a Freelancer Miss. The Fury that's based entirely around missiles in the Freelancer that's based entirely around missiles. It, 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 it's ludicrous. perfection. It's perfection. It's there's like, I can't remember. I actually figured it out one time, but there's like an obscene number of missiles on the on the Freelancer Miss, and now you have. 20 missiles mounted to the wings of the the the, the fury missile variant the Mirai mx if you needed if you <laughs> needed a a missile boat in in a fight that's what you bring is yep. though that combo and you I'm, just you pop up i'm just waiting for some guy who's got an idris totally to fill that 
with Furies and then spend three hours throwing them out. Then I want to see the sequel to that where someone gets their javelin and kills an entire server. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Oh, man. This is, and this is, by the way, you w- wondered what the hell the hammerhead is for? This is what the hammerhead is for. It's for murdering flocks of these things. Yes. But, <laughs> but this is, I mean, they did the perfect job with the styling of this ship. Oh, Honestly, yeah, it it's looks beautiful. But it, it has so many callbacks directly to the TIE Fighter, which is exactly what this ship is. It's a small fighter that has no, like, no hyperspace, no quantum ability. It's just, it's it's that image in Star Wars of dozens of them falling out of a Star Destroyer, right? Like, that's, and, and that's what we get. Shiver, are, is something wrong? <laughs> That's what the ship's meant to when they said yeah. in ISC, oh it's obvious what the ship Oh yeah, it's I it's a I thought it was the drones from Homeworld. It's a tie fighter. Like no, the they even had a call out Homeworld. They even had a um a, uh, there's a there's a scene in the episode where Ooh. their TIE fighter their legally distinct TIE fighter clone is chasing their legally distinct X Wing clone. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Uh, all right so everyone in chat who has bought one of these and anyone here have have any of you bought one no but i want one um my only problem is that i have a okay here's the deal right yes Kevin. this is and i will absolutely play with my friends in star citizen but i have a bad tendency in mmos to spend most of my time by myself and yep. the fury is useless if you are playing by yourself. Yes, um, it is. Or not completely useless, but very close to useless. Um, and it should be. They people complaining that it didn't have a quantum drive. This ship should not have a fucking quantum drive. It there is absolutely no fucking way it should have a quantum drive. No. Yeah. Um. And <laughs> I mean. And they were totally right. If they put a quantum drive in it, the ship would be twice as big as it, it as it currently is. Um, and it would be way too powerful if it had a quantum drive, as yeah. a, as like a like with that much firepower and the ability to travel long distances in a system. No, it needs to be a carrier based or planet based ship. It's basically saying, I'd like this uh, Fury to have a quantum drive, I'd like it to have size 10 <laughs> weapons, and I want it to be able to fit in my Aurora. And I want it to have armor that is uh, thicker than an entire planet. Yeah. And three cup holders. Wow, that's I, that's that's a bit far for me. Like, um, like there was a line. So one of the things... Is there a, is there a limit on cup holders? What's, what's yes! the limit? Yeah, the, Two the per person. Limit. The two limit per is two per person. Oh my god, my chair is good. Yeah, the limit is um, two per person. So I, I just wanted to hold us in my chair for some reason. Nice I want to chair. talk about this because I think that that's a beautiful chair. Uh, one of the things I really like about this ship, though, is you mostly you use it in carriers. But one of the things it will be good at, and I think I really want to see them use it in this way, is I think it would be a really good planetary defense ship. Yes, you don't need quantum. Um and and I think it would be really cool to be like in a in a hostile scenario where you're like attacking a ground target for just like a swarm of these things to like rise off of the planet and come for you. Yeah. And I think that it would be really cool to take like to have your your fury um based on a on a planet somewhere and you take missions that are like mercenary type missions that are just local, right? Um, you know. A few minutes trip by super extremely fast tiny ship mode. So <laughs> I have a question on that though, actually, because I don't even think it'll be worth it for that. Why? Because it has no quantum travel, right? Yep. Which means you won't like you can't get around the planet easily. Because no, that's have to, quantum. You'd have to see. You'd have to see what your max speed is on the uh, on the new. Um... Transit master mode. modes 
Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I, I definitely think it's going to be really useful to have one or two of these in a settlement. Totally. And like your settlements under attack or even a space. Well, station. are you going to, or in a space station? Yeah. But like, are you going to run and get into your, whatever you've got, or do you hop into the fury because it's light, fast, maneuverable, great in Atmo, right? Mm -hmm. That's probably your go-to. I think it's also like, um, I don't remember who, who I was talking to this about, but like, 890 jumps are now no longer going to be an easy target because it might be filled with like 15 of these damn things, right? Yeah, just open the, up the nose, the nose hanger, and like, pfft. yeah, it. it <laughs> I I think it's going to be really interesting because it won't. I don't think you'll see them all the time, um, because they do require lots of people. Like you need additional people to be manning the furies. But I think it's going to change a little bit the um, almost the power dynamic because now anything could have furies inside it. Yep, that changes. That's going to be an, that's going to be it's going to be an oh shit moment. It's going to yep. be an oh shit moment. You'll be like uh, you know you're, you're praying on some. Uh, innocent looking uh, merchant ship and all of a sudden two furies come busting out of the yeah. freaking cargo hold <laughs> like oh shit <laughs> I, I think it's a brilliant brilliant ship um, I I think so here's here's some of my problems with the Midai because I have to do this for any ship um and it's not even problems with the Midai. It's problems with everything else miscast. Because this is the ship, or at least these are the engines that we were originally promised on the Freelancer. That is the cockpit view that more misc ships should have. Yeah, it's similar. It's a, it's a pretty close um, to the Prospector. Really answer. Uh, sorry, I've Hellfire has asked a very interesting question there. How What's many that? Furies can you fit into a Drake Catapult? Um, many. Guessing, guessing about twelve, maybe you more. You want to get fancy with it? Maybe twenty-four. You just mix in every other compartment module. Put a fucking tonk in there as well. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Well, yeah, your heavy not. artillery and your little uh, buzzy fighters. See, what I want is I want the fuse ability from Tears of the Kingdom, and I want to fuse a Midai into a Tonk and have the two yeah. of them come out together. Oh, man. I want would something that really fly can't fly. <laughs> with the Fury Drive. <laughs> Yes. I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I mean, it's, like I, I, I really do want. I'm not going to buy one. Um, I just bought a house, and fifty U.S. dollars is a lot of Canadian dollars. And quite, I, you know, I don't blame you, but you're quite fixated upon this. I just bought a house. I just bought a fucking house. Why didn't you do this to myself? I've just bought a fucking house. I just bought a house. I just bought a house. <laughs> I think, because, I think you just summed up uh, David's last like two weeks. It's because <laughs> Shiver, I'm going from having no mortgage whatsoever to oh shit, I have a mortgage now. Yeah, bollocks. And I mortgage increase in property taxes, increase in insurance, going to be an increase in heating and cool. Like There's I don't one thing know. For it. What's that? Paris only fans when. I mean, yeah. That's as soon as anyone wants, as soon as anyone wants to pay me, I got no shame. I uh, I think we will I don't think pay we should put that for um, reviewing really. pictures of that beard. <laughs> you, you will be competing with Noscavian, though. Be warned. Uh, ah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> that's problem. Ah, uh, I I feel way too grown up. And not only that, this is like his third house <laughs> pixie that he's ever purchased. 
I think. Yes, Th this will be the third house. Yeah. So, Sorry, um, just, I, I love the idea of Eris foot pics and all the little toes of beards and glasses. <laughs> I like, I really like the Mirai. I really like that they've, <laughs> that it's a broken off. It's not a misc. It's a misc adjacent. Um, yep. I, I, I genuinely think this is one of the better looking ships they've done. I, I think this is an A plus from me. Yeah, it's it really nice. Pretty cool. It is pretty cool. It, it, it looks like a solid, rugged piece and of it equipment it's it doesn't pretend to be anything that it's there. not yeah mm, mm. and this it's got is... potential there for people who really want to be a fighter in a acrobatic way this is it it's either it's this totally. or the m50 yeah um they were also talking david i think you'll love this when you get your hands on this thing because i'm sure you'll like rent it or some shit at some point um but they were talking about how how awesome the ship will probably be with people with eye trackers, yeah. Um, and how you can well, how well you'll be able to track targets, and yeah, you can yeah. see everything. Well, and and like, I love some of the ships that I've got, but none of them have a very good view. Uh, the freelancer I've is had a fucking insane thought. Oh no! Uh -oh. What is it? Right. God, am I, I, this, this is the product of lack of sleep, but it's crazy. <laughs> Instead of a track IR or something like that, the R helmet. Yep. Instead of it just looking around, that's how you move your fucking ship. You could. Set that up. Someone with VR setting that up would, if they can, I don't quite know if it would work, but that they would have... be pretty fucking interesting. They've said a couple of times that they are going to, that they are working slightly on VR. Uh, I don't think it's like a main hmm. concern of theirs yet. They've got to get like Vulcan in and I mean, and stuff. But you can tell still to this day they are keeping VR in mind when they are making yes. this game. Very absolutely. Much so. Yep. It may not be a priority, like you say, but it is still from the way. It's it's still there. They it's, are still accommodating for VR potentially. I mean, yep, yep. God knows what they're going to do for uh, FPS if you're in VR. They that's, can figure that that's out. An ongoing problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are plenty of games that let you move your head, and you'd still have to use a mouse and keyboard to shoot. Like, it, like it, you you handle. FPS in VR exactly as you would with track IR. Like you've got yeah. free head movement, but WASD controls your movement and left prolic shoots. But that, right? like therein it's... lies the slight issue of I, I think that can be responsible partially for motion sickness alongside the FPS and all that sort of thing. Because can be. your body expects you to do these movements yourself, but you're doing it and there's this weird disconnect. It depends on the person, though. There are a lot of people yeah. that yeah. get yeah. no motion sickness anymore. Um, have you? Uh, yeah, the, the, the headsets uh, are a lot better I, now than they used to be. I, I, did, uh, have I you tried the rip, uh, the fucking second release uh, yeah. Oculus? Yeah. And I did manage to get Skyrim working with it. Yeah. I I didn't feel sick, but I was like, I I'm very confused here. With the controls and the, yeah. it, I, I'm sure you can get used to it. So, have you heard now, of the Skyrim game? Was yeah. also, were you playing Skyrim VR, like the actual VR? Um, no, Skyrim release? VR wasn't even out then. Yeah, yeah. That so you yeah. were you were playing like a modded VR VR experience. Heavily that, modded. That's yeah, part yeah. of it. That's part of it. I think yeah. playing. I think it's important. Like with VR, you can mod in VR in games. I think the native experiences are important though, because like a lot of yeah. there's a a lot of potential for for motion sickness if you don't so, have it perfectly built. What I will say is I have tried like I've got um an uh, Oculus Quest two, which is um as a screen significantly better than my original Vive was, um, and I was playing you know things built for vr 
and me, I was able to play like an hour to an hour and a half of VR, and then I get out of it, and I had a headache for six to eight hours, queasy feeling. Ooh. I I can't do VR. I it my body is not built for it. Can't do it. Even if it's a sitting what, game. Like, even if it's nothing. Like no, really? cannot do it. My my. I hate it. This is going to be a weird question. That said, do you wear your glasses when you're in VR? Yes, I have to, because otherwise I can't see. It's still, it's still far. Like it, it it's weird. Yeah, um, no, no, I'm like it, looking it, through it the, uh, binoculars the wrong way. Well, no, it's it's the screen might be right close mm. to your face. Oops. I see. But you're looking at things that are far away. Yeah, no, I, no, I have the same experience in VR. I still need my glasses. I don't yeah. know why. That said, I've got a friend who. Do you know? Have you played? Uh, is it Outer Wilds? Yes. That's the From like Obsidian. No. That's Outer Worlds. Yes, that's Outer World. Uh, yeah, Outer World. The yeah. Outer um, Outer Wilds. I know what you're is, talking about. Is it's a the, loop, the, the time loop game. Yeah, phenomenal game. Outer Wilds. It's a time loop game. Um, oh, that's playing music because, of course, it bloody is. Super uh, cool. Sorry game. about that. Amazing game, Outer Wilds. But it's like gravity and trippy as fuck, and you'll like, like, d jump up, and your perspective will flip three hundred and sixty mm -hmm. degrees, and you'll like it's. It's a mind fuck even on a screen. And I've got a friend who modded it into VR and played through the entire game in VR with no motion sickness whatsoever. And I'm like, you're a I fucking got, mutant. I almost got dizzy <laughs> playing it on a screen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I, I, those are I was the. For, I don't know if it was the first iteration of VR. But it, it it was certainly the first that I was aware of back in day. In day, you know, you had polygon blocks coming at you, and you had to oh, yeah, sit yeah. in this thing. That's what and the no one, you know, Virtual you know, Boy motion... or whatever. No, no, I, 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 these were not. These were like full on things in a, in in a mall. I yeah. played oh, I it first those. in yeah. a mall. You went in a mall. They strapped on a country and thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you get like ten minutes, and by the time you just got into it, they were like, "All right, get out." Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like back in back in those days, uh, no one. I I don't know if there was big talk about motion sickness or anything like that. But there never seemed to be at that time. But people just you were very stuck with VR yeah. in those days because they they didn't really know what to do with the tech. Well, I, it was I, nowhere near nowhere near as advanced as it needed to yeah. be. They were. I think they're probably yeah. very aware of that. Yeah. Um, I think I think Star Citizen is going to implement and honestly going to make very good use of VR. And I think what they're likely going to do is they're going to make it entirely up to people how they want to use it. If someone is comfortable doing it in first person and in space, go nuts. Me, I'm absolutely going to try it. I'm going to yep. feel sick as shit, but I'm going to try it. But I, I genuinely think it would be really fun to be playing Star Citizen and have the headset beside me. And when I get into a ship and know that I'm going to be in a ship for a bit, I turn on the headset and I put on my <laughs> helmet yep. and go. Like, why Just the fuck not? Just don't do the helmet flip because I don't want you to drop your head. Yeah. No. <laughs> Um, but, um, but we also have to understand that in 10 years, when Star Citizen comes out, VR headsets are going to be a lot better, too. It's true. Yeah. Um, I, it, I, it, they're I still continuing to, in development. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to mention that I actually, one of the, when I was actually super following VR, which is a few years ago, um, I, know, I know that foveated rendering was like the big thing that they needed to get done in yeah. order to make it better. Yeah. Um, and I've seen that some of the new headsets that are coming out, and I think some that even that already exist, um, do have foveated rendering now, which, which one's foveated massively rendering? cuts down on how much render how much processing power you need. That's eye tracking so. and rendering just what your eyes are looking at, right? Exactly, because your eyes can only see things clearly 
exactly where you're looking at. That's it. Yeah. And so what they do is they only render to full resolution where your eyes act are actually looking in the image. So it does eye tracking and then it adjusts the rendering. And so it, I think it like can like have or even quarter is uh, the amount of uh, processing power you need to make it Which the image. Is actually going to be interesting because when that eye tracking and VR stuff really is better, I think you'd actually be able to use either like a Toby even for for a desktop PC or the the eye tracking in VR mm -hmm. to significantly reduce the cost of running any game. Like Toby can track very well what you're looking at on the screen, and if it only renders in full detail where i'm looking at like the little box around where i'm looking and everything else gets blurred a bit that would significantly reduce the amount of rendering hey you could even tie that into um the um the freaking um what the hell are they called the like fsr and um yeah the and then video one the what the yeah. yeah, DLSS. So you could tie that even into that, where it's like, oh, we'll go full quality mode on where you're looking, but then we'll we'll have like Ultra lower quality mode. modes coming out from yeah from there. Um, that would be yeah. That's I'm sure there's somebody at Nvidia and working AMD, on that. like yeah working away at that I right now. <laughs> way back when, um, I think Linus actually did it. He managed to get uh first of all uh an Nvidia and an AMD GPU working. Not together, mm -hmm. but at the same yep. time on one PC on Windows yep. 10. And there was talk <laughs> at the time of whether or not they would be able to have a VR helmet where one GPU renders one panel, one GPU renders the other panel. Uh, I don't know if anything ever that happens was... to that, but they took out SLI and now the cost it, of GPUs. For a, while, for a while, people were thinking that that's where SLI was going to go, but it uh, mm. the, the GPU manufacturers just didn't have any interest in it. Um... And, and SLI and and um and, um, and let, let's be honest, version. SLI sucks. They suck. It just never worked very well. And it wasn't that it sucked so much as that it was just a pain in the urethra to implement, and it just wasn't fucking exactly. worth it for two people. Well, you, you never got you never got symmetric performance improvement anyway. It was like, oh, I'm gonna spend twice as much money to get forty percent more frames. Well, I have cool. still never played through The Witcher one. Because back when The Witcher 1 came out, I was on, uh, I don't well, even remember what, uh, it was rough, but I was on a specific video card that was, I don't know, it was like a 970 or something. I genuinely don't remember what it was, but it was NVIDIA's, we're not going to just have you have two cards and you SLI them. Oh, we're the old build fucking two GPUs. Cards Two two GPUs uh, that would be in a one nine, GPU. That would be a something ninety. That yeah, what the old nineties used. To, I think it, it was oh, anyway. But it was two GPUs was on the last one. It was two GPUs on one GPU, and I didn't figure this out until years later. But because it was running an SLI for Witcher uh, One, no, it wasn't. It didn't quite use SLI. That was quite, the thing because, that fucked it. Because I was running two GPUs, I, I realized years later that I could turn off one of the GPUs and would have actually solved this problem, but I didn't know that at the time because, you know, the yeah. internet was still waking That's up, why they essentially. Selling them. But when trying to play The Witcher 1, Every single light source in the entire game was visible through everything. Ooh. So, like, I, I'd start the game and I could see every single torch shining in kilometers of distance. And I could see them all. And you looked down mm -hmm. through the world and you could see the sun underneath the world. Like, it was just every single light and i just never played it because yeah, it was literally unplayable um um that i yeah. just wanted to give give a shout out that is one remake i'm actually looking forward to. yes they are remaking the witcher one it was barely playable when it was when it was out originally um and i it didn't rise to the playability level that i'm comfortable with um 
and uh, I would love to play that game. So I'm I'm uh, looking forward to. I'm hoping that they can completely revamp it, basically with um, with a lot of The Witcher 3's stuff in mind. Yeah, I, I think we've got a couple more. Um, oh, cool! Videos. More videos. Let's jump back into Fury. Um. Oh yeah, they're showing off the MX. I like. Like the Fury is nice. The MX looks like um a killer it, it looks like a killer drone. It's like yep. Like AI has gone off the rails and is about to kill all humans and this is what they just the AI designed to kill everyone with. Yep. I love it. I think it's beautiful. It's genuinely it's beautiful. Such a kamikaze machine though. This is like, I know I'm not coming back. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I I think oh, they did a really good job here, though, of the blast shields yeah. in that you lose, you do lose a substantial bit of that viewpoint for to additional get, to armor. Get a little bit of armor. Yeah, to get a bit of armor. I like that, like, that trade back and forth, right? Um... And every implementation cool. I've seen of their like holographic uh, view screen, I every time I see it in this game, I love it. Yeah, it is beautiful. I uh, ha have we had the missile rework yet? Actually, no, missiles still don't still don't work properly. Because and that's the one problem I think with the MX and the miss is. Missiles need to work properly. We, we, missiles it, need... It's, yeah. it's the thing. <laughs> we need missiles that work. We're all excited for missile ships, but the missiles yeah. don't really work. So we're, we'll be excited when the missiles work properly. <laughs> yeah, very. Um, but yeah, uh, beautiful machine. There, There's a couple of shots. In here, here it is. Sure it's right here. Video. This is this is the Tie Fighter destroying the X-wing. Ah uh, yes, yeah, for sure. There it is. D do you get it, Shiver? Do you see it? I get it now. I get it now. I still think it looks like something out of Homeworld, though. That's fair. I mean, yeah, it could. Multiple, uh, multiple uh, inspirations, certainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really love that they still did all like there's a video in here. I'm not sure if you even had it up yet. I, I've but we've been talking about all sorts of stuff. Um, but there's a video that showed all, shows all the components in this yes. thing. I love that they still like we still had to fill all the components in, and so they have like this crevice, and the, this is where your shield generator is, and this is where your engine is, and here's your power supply, and here's the other bit, and it's just all bolted around the outside of the cockpit. Uh, so cool. So, you know what this ship really made me think of? What's that? It's another Star Citizen ship. Can anyone guess what other Star Citizen ship this made me think of? Anyone in chat? I'm going to give it a couple seconds while we switch in to the next way, video. What, what was the thing? What was the thing? Everything. Everything about this ship is okay. everything about this other Star Citizen ship that already exists. It's like... The, the Fury or the MX. Both of them, or the Fury more, oh, but it's like the Fury is like this thing's little sibling. No, not the Reliant, not the Scout. I don't think anyone's gonna get this oh, because. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, bollocks! Yeah. Uh, that other Jean ship that I can't pronounce it. No, it's not. It's not. not, the, it's uh, not it is not it's a Jean the, ship. It's the Scorpion. <laughs> the Odyssey. Scorpion. Nice. No, the no, no, nobody's going to get this. Okay. It's the Buccaneer. Well, we're going to go through every single ship now just to fucking spike The you. Buccaneer, the Buccaneer is... It wouldn't have been taken that long to get to the bees. The, the Buccaneer is just engines and weapons, and the Fury is just engines and weapons. Yep. Like... Yeah, the, it's the, like it's, a ship you wear. Yeah. <laughs> the fury is that, just yeah that's a, a oh slightly... also, thank, thank you that, Jamy, the, the uh, guys, guys, thank you guys that <laughs> shot right there was uh a caterpillar unloading a whole shit ton of yes. um of furies yep two caterpillars actually 
I'm really happy that they, they made this shit. There, just that, awesome. that shot right there is like mm-hmm. a Star Destroyer unloading TIE Fighters. So cool. Oh, you bitch. Now I'm not going to be able to stop seeing that. That's what they right, want. That's what it is. How many were in this? How many were in these caterpillars? Let's how let's many watch. pod bay doors? How many doors does a caterpillar uh, have? Because you can five fi- said someone fit two furies per caterpillar pod by going one, sideways. two, three, yeah. four. There are so there there's are four 12, doors and 12 there are doors. twelve and the, there were, I think there are twelve that came out and there are two caterpillars. So I think it was six per. That not saying it's max. I'm saying that's how many they had in there. Was six if you per fit ship. Them, if you spit them sideways, I mean, you could. Put, there's what four doors on a caterpillar? One, uh, one, two, three, yeah, four. Yeah, both, both sides five. open. You can open. Yeah, up both, both sides, sides open. So there's two and there's per one side. In the front too. There's yeah. one in the front. I think you could fit like fifteen, fifteen or sixteen furies in a caterpillar. If you, you like, if I... you pushed it. I just love the fact that CIG are like, so we're going to make this ship that's going to be small. <laughs> what, like the pocket carrier? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll get the caterpillar ready. That's what they want. Yep. yep. They know. They, they know they what we know want. Us. They know what we want. The caterpillar Look, it... is going to be one of those ships that you side-eye all the time. It could be carrying, like, medical supplies, or it could be carrying, like, a world-ending... 400 destroying military. <laughs> We have I have said this many times, and then it came true, truer than it already was. But one of the things about CIG that I have always personally loved is Melissa Estrada. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say no, that's that. you. I knew that was coming. <laughs> no, it's like where did disco come from? People might forget. 70s. But, yes. But but Disco started by making Star Citizen content. He was a content very, creator. Very Disco Lando hilarious. goes where Disco, Disco goes. But but there is a significant. In fact, I would go amount. so much as to say Disco Lando goes Disco. Yeah, Zach, you're right. Like, where did where did Jake come from? A lot, right here, right here. A, a lot of CIG, uh, I don't remember who the lighting guy was, but they got a lighting guy because he was doing, like, mock-ups of what the lighting should be, right? Like, CIG... They got some artists from yes. uh, Next Great Starship. Yeah, like, see, they, yep. they hire oh, um, from us. Totally. Thanks, Guns and totally. Glue. Um, <laughs> it's the Guns and... Guns and Glue, did Jake leave us, go somewhere else, and then go to CIG? <laughs> but it's like. Thank you, Guns and Glue. Citizens. Jake, okay. Jake still has the same love for Star Citizen that they had when they were on this show. They yep. still ask. Probably got it this, more. Probably more, honestly. They st- but, but they still ask the same questions. They're still like, okay, well, this is what people are going to want to see. They know what we want because they were us. Yep. And that some of their stories about oh. the things they've done to try and improve things. You're like, Jesus, Jake, well done. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, Jake is Jake is a just just awesome. Jake Love is Jake. community bay. Yeah, basically. But, so I think I've told this story before, but probably not in a while. There was, back in the, during the Kickstarter, a couple of friends and I got really, really interested in Star Citizen during the Kickstarter, because it was Chris Roberts, and and we had all these questions, and we all, you know, we all Kickstarted it. But one of my really good friends, Commander Llama, had some some que- I don't even remember what the friggin' question was, but he asked a bunch of questions about the project, and Chris Roberts answered. Like mm-hmm. 
Chris came out and answered this random person on the internet's questions about the project. And I know yeah, the project the is... Was the answer was, shut the fuck up and give me your money. <laughs> no, but like, it was a detailed, like, answer you about... too much time on that subreddit. <laughs> yeah, get off it. <laughs> but, like, I... It's okay. changed... It's changed a bit since then. We don't have reverse the verse anymore. We don't really have quite as direct a connection with CIG anymore. But then again, CIG are now over a thousand employees. Like, yep. it has to change. But, but we still have a, a much... huge connection because a lot of their employees yeah. are from here. Yeah. And it's one of the weird things of Star Citizen community is that depending on when you bought into this, you you ha remember certain levels and you may even be remembered by devs for meeting them in certain places, asking certain questions, and that forever there will always be that link between certain members of the community yep. and CIG. And you know, it, it's when when you're running an MMO, you need to listen to your customers as well as what you are planning as well. So the closer yep. you are, the better you're going to do. But at I the will... same time, don't always listen to everyone. I, you don't listen... Well, no. You listen to everyone. You don't implement everything everyone says. You still see what they're saying, and then you filter. But I will I will genuinely never forget, back in the day when we were doing all the transcripts and everything, visiting the Manchester <laughs> office yep. and having CIG devs come up and be like, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing the transcripts because we don't have time to watch the shows. We read your transcripts to find out what everyone else in the company are doing. Like we literally had ah the devs glory days of, the, of CIG. Of, yeah. but, but we had like the developers were thanking us, the community, yep. for telling them what was happening in the game. And we were. We were providing an essential service, which CIG are now providing themselves. They do a much better job, right? They do the monthly report. They do a lot. That's stuff that didn't exist. We were filling a niche that didn't, that was not yep. filled by anyone else. A lot of people and... were Star Citizen fans and didn't have time to yep. watch the content. So they were just like, can I just read the highlights? That'd be cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's very convenient, you know? You might be at work and unable to watch video, but you might be able to have that on one side while you're doing the other thing and just flip between the two. So it's it's an essential it is an essential resource just being able to just go, I, I just want to look at the script. I can't watch it. And, and personally I genuinely hate that everything is on video now. I don't wanna watch a video about how to fix a toilet. Give me some instructions. I don't want to watch. You don't a end up hitting your head anyway. I'm actually really good at fixing toilets. They don't require heavy tools. But like, I don't want to watch a, I, a ten I minute video summarizing off. shit. Just give me the ten. Like, give me fall off the toilet. I, yeah, I, I do all the time. Expect you to fall off the toilet, smash your head on the cistern, and then have this epiphany about some sort of capacitor fluxing. So, I was thinking about this a lot this week, because um, John Scalzi, who's an author that is pretty good, um, was, was talking about how ridiculous it is in movies when there's a fight in a bathroom and they, like, put someone's head through a sink or something. And it's like, mm -hmm. where are you buying those sinks? Because... I put someone's head into a sink in my bathroom and it's not the sink that's going to crack. Like, sorry, bud. Porcelain sinks are really fucking strong. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's Hollywood stupid. Also, also, <laughs> I mean, sorry, this is just totally random aside, but anybody out there who hasn't had this have happen to them, 
you ever if you ever get cut by porcelain, get yourself to the fucking ER. Holy <laughs> shit! Yes, porcelain porcelain cuts like razors. It is brutal. I've seen yeah. some. Um, also, yeah. If no, go ahead. did carbide, he'd never mention it. I can't talk about it. I love this clip. I keep watching it, and it's just amazing. I love it so much. They even look a bit like Buccaneers when they're all lined up like that with the really big two engines. Yeah. Yeah. They really sold on the Buccaneer comparison. <laughs> it is. I'm sorry. Um, Elwook, that's a good question. Delete, uh, whatever it is, the player cache and, the um, user folder, user, user folder. Always delete help. the user folder. Other than that, always delete the I, user folder. I have no idea. Um, uh, mine did one my, um, one of my attempts to log in did say entitlement processing for quite a while before I got in. I don't know what that really means, but. I have a. I could guess, but I guess they're just getting slammed. It's Saturday night on free fly. Yep. On a new patch, I I have a feeling they're just getting slammed. Yep. I agree. Um, I mean, how long have you been waiting? I think I think but it was one point think, a couple a week or two ago that we were waiting close like ten the minutes. Game and Sorry, I'd probably close the game and then delete the user folder or reopen it and try it and wait 10 minutes. If it didn't load, then I would give up. Yeah. I'd say the same. Yeah, I'd, I did actually successfully load into the game after waiting for about 10 minutes. Um, yeah. It, it's, it can be really slow. The servers are getting smoked right now. Which is good. Yep. Man. Oh yeah. I mean, every time the, the servers get really smashed, they learn new stuff about uh, about what they're going to need to actually run the freaking thing. I I still don't know how much Star Citizen I'm going to play because I genuinely still don't know how. Well, by that point, by that point, you're going to be retired. So, like, fuck, we'll be playing all the time. I don't even know because there's going to be like Zelda 13 to eat my time, but like. Who knows? I, we'll have fun with it. We'll we'll have I'm fun with it. We'll be running the show, and we'll we we'll be doing it in our walkers. And... <laughs> Wait, I thought we were quitting when it was done. No, that's true. Um, um, I thought about it. I thought about it, but I mean, I still want to like play the game with you, and this is a like, piece of time I've cut out of my life to, <laughs> to do yeah. Star Citizen. This stuff. is this is am the. I, um... Am I missing? I thought they put in static server meshing already, and we're working on no. dynamic. Oh, no, no, uh, no, Jesus. No, no, no. Yeah. Static static server meshing would allow them to release pyro. Yeah. If they don't have it, they can't. Ah! Carbide? So, a static server mesh, can I just quickly, just yeah. very quickly do this? Yep. Do uh, it. A static That's... server mesh basically would allow them to have, um, they could have like a 200, 200 servers running a single instance of the game yeah. that you are playing in. Um, because each server would just be a defined area of the world that it would be responsible for. And they would be meshed together so that when you flew between servers, it would be like, oh, I need to transfer you over to the other server. Cool. They can't do that yet, which means, which is why they can't put Pyro in, because they can't transfer you over to... Um, <laughs> and the reason they can't get over, over to Pyro... I don't know why I thought that was in, but I did think it no. was in. It was the, it's, it's persistent entity streaming that's in. That was yeah. what the piece that they got, which is that items can exist permanently in the world, um, which is a huge piece to get to the, you know, next he, step. But here's the the quickest static. explanation I have is static server meshing allows them to do everything that they want to do in Star Citizen. Dynamic server meshing allows them to do it a well, fuck ton less. cheaper. It's yeah. the, dynamic is just about cost. Static is well, they can do and, everything they want. And efficiency. Yes, static has efficiency. A, static, has, static has a bit of a problem in that if you like suddenly overload for some reason, if all the players is at one place, yeah, it can't dynamically yeah, adjust to that. So you could still end up with a static server mesh like crashing. But yeah. because, yeah. because 
all of a sudden all the players are in one spot and then that server just goes <gasps> and dies. And, the, the, <laughs> and I sta- uh, static is pretty much standard for any MMO. I mean, like Eve Online, I believe uses static. Eve, Eve really? Online Eve uses time. Ta- Eve? Eve uses time dilation to make things work. That's no, that's something completely different. That is something else. Time dilation slows the system down, uh, depending on how many people are in it. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't have to calculate as many operations in as quick a time as possible. But I'm I'm pretty sure that Tranquility is a static server. I don't know. Otherwise, I don't I don't know like much Jeter. about Leave. Jita was the I don't know if it still is. It used to be the big trading hub. Constantly thousand plus people in there ran like shit. Yeah, but but CIG has to make it not run like shit because totally. exactly. Eve, Eve can get exactly. away with it. That's where Dynamic will probably be able to really get rid of those issues. Um, yeah. well, in the meantime, static... what they're going to have to do in the, in the meantime, what they would have to do if they wanted to get by for a while without Dynamic is create gameplay reasons for players not to always be in the same place. Which they static, totally can. Static will allow them to probably dramatically increase server count like players on a server oh, absolutely because right? they can say that each planet in a Good. in a system has its own server yeah. which you know you yeah. can massively increase player count and 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 you know what people are going to you know get on a server and try and organize everyone to get to one place in the server to crash the server because people are dicks but <laughs> they're still going to be able, like for the most for the most part they're still going to be able to massively increase the number of players on a server with static dynamic is going to allow them to do it even more um yeah. carbide believe me i am link is just now like we got him a tablet he's just starting to play like little tiny kids games he's only 3 Believe me. Old enough to sit in a fucking turret. I'm getting him in on... No, no, no. I don't fucking care. I don't give a shit if he plays Star Citizen. Fuck. All I want him to play is (laughs) Zelda. (laughs) You're named after this game. (laughs) He's going to be playing Zelda. Like, there is... When he comes of age, he's going to be like, Father... Did you name me after hyperlinks on the internet? No, son, I named you after a Nintendo game character. You know what? I fucking it's hate really... Nintendo. I love Sega. It's really, really funny because um, Sega's coming I, back. I was just just like a day or two yesterday, uh, Cass sent me um, like a, a image of a Robin Williams interview. Where Robin Williams was asked, "Did you name your daughter after like Zelda Fitzgerald, the daughter of whoever?" And he was like, "No, I had bought a Nintendo and a really big TV, and I was playing The Legend of Zelda, and I named my daughter after Zelda because it was a great game, and she's just lucky that I didn't name her Mario or Luigi." Unfortunately, Nicholas is. Nicholas Cage's uh, one of his children was not so fortunate. Oh, really? Oh, what, what was their name? Carlel. Oh. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Look, I I named Link Lincoln because you know what? It's a real name. <laughs> it's a real name. Yeah. He can either choose the short form link if he chooses to which is fine or he can go with lincoln which is a great car manufacturer and some dude that i think was important in the states i don't know (sighs) oh fuck me (laughs) like lincoln lincoln who the president dude yeah yeah uh, the guy it's, with the funny a, hat yeah it's a multi-purpose name yeah used to wrestle yeah we should wrap up i do actually have to leave on time today. oh yeah we time should wrap up today. sure so. what do you got going on this week i 
Shit. I think we've got Shadowrun uh, on Monday in your time zone over on Table of Horrors. Uh, we also have Vampire the Masquerade on Friday night uh, over on twitch.tv slash Table of Horrors. Uh, tune on in if, if you like seeing people pretending to be vampires and then usually making penis jokes for about 20 minutes. I like that. That's basically what this show is most of the time. Yeah. Uh, so go go watch that on twitch.tv slash table of horrors and then come back here next Saturday because we're going to run through whatever happens this week in ISC and then I'm going to try the new player experience and these bastards are going to make fun of me. I'm excited. Thank you so much for, for watching, Kemi. Thank you for the raid. Thank you to everyone that stuck out and uh, and hung around and and yeah, said, you guys. said things. And um, thank you to Mangoes. Mangoes are delicious. Specifically Atulfo Mangoes, which are the less popular mangoes. They're the yellow ones. They're smaller than the really big green mangoes. Yeah, okay. But they're actually much better tasting. Atulfo Mangoes, you should really try them. They're delicious. Wasn't Mango the name of a planet that Ming the Merciless was in charge of? I have no idea, but Mango was the name of a bird that my family used to have that would frequently try to eat meat, up to and including people's ears. He would land on your shoulder and take bites, literal bites, 